Hey there, this is Mikey Peterson from Snow City Arts. My pronouns are he, him, and his. Thanks for letting me join you today as we make art using different forms of digital media. Today, we will be digitally sculpting creatures, monsters, and aliens, or really anything that your imagination guides you to make using the online SculptGL application. You can use this type of program to create digital sculptures for video games, films, television, and new media artworks. Before we begin, let's look at some examples of creature design through different art mediums. Here's Shigeru Miyamoto's Super Mario Brothers characters. And this is Millicent Patrick creating the creature from the 1954 horror classic, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. This is Stuart Freeborn posing with his famous creation Yoda from the set of The Empire Strikes Back. The resemblance is uncanny. And this is visual artist Wengechi Mutu still from her video, The End of Eating Everything, featuring musical artist Santa Gold. As you can see, creature creations have spanned several decades in mediums and can be made from various tools and materials. To begin your very own creature creation, go to the SculptGL application on any web browser. There is no need to download anything. The application functions purely online. Looking at the application's interface, you will see tabs at the top of the screen, tools on the right-hand side, and the virtual clay sphere in the center. Let's start with moving the clay ball within the center field. Using your computer's trackpad, press down and keep it pressed, and use another finger to rotate the sphere. To zoom in and out, use two fingers at the same time, like a peace sign, and lightly push forward and backward. To move the clay sphere, keep the option key pressed down on the keyboard, and use the same method for rotating the sphere. Now let's begin sculpting. On the right hand side, under sculpting and painting, and the subheading common, make sure that the symmetry box is checked. This feature divides your sphere in half, creating mirror images of each half. This feature is great for creating faces. Now let's check out our sculpting tools. On the right hand side of the screen, under sculpting and painting, and the subheading tool, there is a box that says brush. This is the first tool we'll use. If you click this box, you will see a ton of other tool options. We'll get to these later. For now, stay on the brush selection. Move your cursor over the clay sphere. You'll notice a small dot with a circle around it and another small dot. The dot in circle represents the area that will be manipulated when sculpting. And the dot without the circle signifies that the symmetry function is on. A mere image of your sculpting manipulation will occur at this location. To sculpt, keep the trackpad pressed and use another finger to manipulate the clay. As you can see, the manipulation is contained within the circle and it also appears on the other side of the sphere with the symmetry function activated. To change the area of a manipulation, move the radius bar in the tool section. You will see the circle get larger and smaller depending on which direction you move the bar. To change the intensity of your sculpting, move the intensity bar in the tool section. You will notice that the sculpting becomes stronger and weaker depending on which direction you move the bar. As you can see, when we are sculpting, clay is added to the sphere. If you want to subtract and dig into the sphere, check the negative box located in the tool section. Now let's explore some of the other tools that we can use for sculpting. So far, we've been using the brush tool. If we click on brush, a window opens to reveal several different tools. Select the drag tool. When using this tool, you can pull the clay from the sphere like this.
Now select Flatten. This will smooth out the clay. Now try Paint. A new section called PBR Materials will open up. Click on Albedo and a color wheel will open up. Here you can select what color you'd like to use. Your cursor now transforms into a paintbrush. You can also select Paint All to paint your entire sculpture. Keep experimenting with all of these different tools to create your creature. Get comfortable maneuvering the interface and switching back and forth from different tools. You can also use SculptGL on a smart device such as an iPad. All of the trackpad movements transfer intuitively to the screen. Now let's speed up the process so you can see how all of these tools and actions work together to create our creature. When you're done with your creature, you can save the project as a SGL file or export your project into an OBJ file by clicking Files, Import, Export at the upper left of the screen. Then select either SGL or OBJ. An OBJ file can be imported into other programs, but the SGL will only work with the SculptGL application. If you'd like, you can take a screen capture of your creature creation. First, you want to remove the grid before you take your screenshot. Click Scene in the upper left and uncheck the Show Grid box. Next, press Command Shift 4 on a Mac or press Windows Print Screen if you're using a Windows computer. You can then drag your cursor around the area that you want to capture. A screenshot will be created and put on your desktop. Congrats, you've finished your creature. I encourage you now to use your imagination to give your creature some unique characteristics. What's your creature's name? What's its scale? What does it eat? Where is it from? What kind of place is it? You can also think about how its environment affects how it looks and how it functions. Thanks so much for making art with me today. There are a ton of other cool Snow City Arts workshops, so feel free to check those out as well.